Hey gang, Drex here, and today I am here basically to beg you for my job. You see, next week there's kind of an important thing that happens here in the United States, and that's that the commissioners of the FCC vote on whether or not to dismantle net neutrality. Now, I'm sure you've heard about net neutrality from a few other content creators on this platform. It is certainly not a rare topic for people to talk about, but I've never talked about it, and this is the first time that it has come up that I have really truly been afraid that we're going to lose it. So now I'm jumping into the fray. For those of you who've been hearing about it for a while, I'm sure you already have a good overview of what net neutrality is. But for the rest of you, I kind of want to give you like a, an overhead view of what this looks like and why it's important. So basically in the United States, we treat utilities one of two ways. There are the public utilities that everybody is meant to have equal access to, and there are the private utilities where you pay for premium access to them. So one example of a public utility would be something like your electricity. Now, you pay for every kilowatt hour that you consume of electricity, but you don't pay more for the electricity that goes to a particular appliance versus another. Some appliances may eat up more electricity overall, but you don't have to pay for a premium package to use your refrigerator or your laptop. On the other hand, there are utilities like, say, cable TV, where it's all arranged according to different packages. You can get a basic package that'll cover a lot of channels that like everybody wants to have access to, or you can get access to different premium level packages that'll include prestige format media, or stuff that like is niche enough but has a big enough demand that people are willing to pay extra for it, right? So the current philosophy in the United States is that the internet is more like electricity than it is like cable television. That is every single byte that gets passed and forth on the internet, regardless of who's requesting it or where it's being requested from, is treated exactly the same way. So you don't get charged more for using, say, Netflix than you would for YouTube, right? But the big telecommunications companies, and by that I mean Comcast, Verizon, AT&T, there might be others, I, I don't know for sure, they want to change that model, and they want to charge you more to access particular pieces of content than others. Now, in and of itself, I'm sure that that doesn't sound that terrible, but this is a really, really slippery slope. Because, for one thing, it also means that they can block access to particular websites or services, right? So, for example, let's say for the sake of argument that, like, Lyft creates an exclusive agreement with AT&T and makes it so that AT&T's users can only use Lyft. They can't use Uber, right? So it becomes kind of a competitive advantage that gets to be really, really, really unfair depending upon how it's used. Now, the telecommunications companies claim that the reason that they want this is that, as it stands currently, the internet being a public utility is something that is anti-competitive and anti-innovation. And they're totally lying through their teeth. See, I've done the research on this, and it turns out that the number of new businesses that get started in the United States every year has jumped 20% since 1994. We also see a little dip in that in the late 90s, so we can be pretty sure that a lot of this is driven by internet. Now, these companies also claim that with net neutrality being what it is, the profits that they can generate off of internet access are not great enough to invest in infrastructure in the United States. The United States has one of the worst speeds for high-speed internet in the developed world. And again, they're totally lying about this. In the past 10 years, each of the three companies that I've told you about, Verizon, AT&T, Comcast, have seen their profits jump anywhere from 15 to 20 percent. So if net neutrality is not anti-innovation and they can still make a profit off of it, then why are they making such a big deal out of repealing it? And the answer, ironically enough, actually goes back to cable television. See, I haven't had a cable connection in probably close to 10 years, and there are a lot of people who are younger than me who never had a cable connection at all. See, in our modern media consumption age, cable TV is kind of a dinosaur. It is an outdated model of content consumption, but it's incredibly profitable. Okay, so let's say for the sake of argument that we do go back to this model. Why is that a problem? Well, the biggest reason is that it cuts off the potential for scrappy little innovators like companies that started small and grew big, a couple of which you might have heard of, Facebook, Google, for example. These companies all started off in dorm rooms, and now they're among the most powerful utilities that you can access on the internet. The opportunities for companies like that to grow from nothing to huge basically disappears in this scenario. And just straight up, if net neutrality gets repealed, that is what is going to happen. That kind of innovation is going to go overseas. The United States is no longer going to be the center of it. Okay, so let's bring it back home and talk about why it is important to me then. And the short answer to that is that I am a very, very small niche channel. 
I create videos where I spin balls on strings. It's extremely niche and the audience is extremely resistant to marketing. So this is not something that any TV network is going to be that interested in putting on the air. So if we go back to a model where there are gatekeepers that get to decide what people see or what they don't see, or even worse, that I have to pay in order to make sure that my content gets in front of my audience's eyeballs, that's a thing that totally puts it out of my means to be able to do this for a living. And you know, granted, in the grand scheme of things, one fewer person making videos about poi is not the end of the world, you know? There are plenty of other things that I can do for a living, and to be honest with you, I'm probably not going to stop making videos. It's something that I enjoy doing, but I'll probably make less of them, and I'll probably be a lot less ambitious about what I try to do with them. Okay, so let's say for the sake of argument that I've convinced you or that you were already convinced. What can you do to help keep the FCC from repealing net neutrality? So the biggest thing is to reach out to the FCC. They need to hear your voices and they need to hear them within the next week. I've included the email addresses to all the different commissioners on the FCC and you should write to each and every one of them and tell them, number one, that net neutrality is good for you and that it's good for the economy. I really like my job and there are thousands of other content creators out there just like me that also like their jobs too. And we've created this wonderfully creative community online for people that have crossed over that border, not just into being consumers of content, but creators of it as well. And I think that's something really special and something that we should work to save. So if you can take out a couple minutes to write to the FCC and let them know that you'd like to keep me around a little bit longer, that would be super awesome and I'd really appreciate it because I really like my job and I'd really love to keep it. So thank you in advance and peace.